Between May the 22nd and May the 25th, around 400 million Europeans of voting age coming from each of the 28 member states of the EU will have the chance to choose who will represent them in the European Parliament for the next five years. Each voter selects his or her preferred candidate or party. In some countries, the votes are counted on a regional basis. These countries are split up into regions or constituencies, and these send a fixed number of winning candidates to the Parliament. In the other countries, the votes are counted on a nationwide basis, and that country will return a fixed number of winning candidates. The bigger a country's population, the more members of parliament it sends. Germany, for example, the EU's most populous country, will send 96 MEPs, while Malta will send just six. Between them, the 28 member states will dispatch 751 MEPs to the European Parliament. While the number of MEPs has grown by more than 50% since they were first directly elected in 1979, the turnout of voters for the European elections has steadily declined. This year, EU leaders hope for a larger citizen mobilisation and a turnout of more than 50%. Once elected, the MEPs can join up with others of similar political orientations to form groups within Parliament, which are like Europe-wide political parties. Groups must be made up of at least 25 MEPs from at least 25% of member states, which currently means seven countries. Some MEPs choose not to join or form groups, although there are several advantages to being part of a group. More office space, more staff, more speaking time, more money from the European Parliament. Political groups can also table motions and amendments. The group leaders meet to set the agenda of the Parliament sessions. The composition of committees and subcommittees also reflects the composition of EP groups. There are currently seven political groups in the European Parliament, although there may be some new ones after this year's elections. For the first time this year, the groups have designated candidates for the presidency of the European Commission, the EU's executive institution. However, the candidate for the group that wins the most votes in the election will not necessarily be the next Commission president. Choosing who that will be is done as follows. The 28 heads of state in the European Council, another EU institution, nominate this person, supposedly taking into account the election results. Members of the European Parliament, another EU institution, then vote to approve or reject the Council's nomination. Once the Commission President has been elected by the Parliament, that person negotiates with other member states to pick the other Commissioners, one per country, also subject to MEP's approval, they make up the EU's governing team for the next five years.